Hello, Internet. Hello, World Wide Web. We got our first joiner, Wade, just salt. People are showing up. I love it. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, perhaps, depending on where you're coming from. Uh, I'm Chad. I am To Write Love on Our Arms Director of Outreach, and today we have a really awesome opportunity to catch up with an old friend. Uh, he is a lead singer of a band called Blue October. His name is Justin Fersenfeld. And uh, yeah, we are so excited to be here. We're so excited that y'all are here. Uh, I'm seeing people wave and that makes me happy. I'm so glad you guys are checking with us. Hope everyone had a really restful weekend as well. And um, yeah, I guess we will get into it. Again, uh, my name's Chad. I'm here on behalf of the To Write Love on Our Arms team. And we're gonna be talking with our friend, Justin Fersenfeld from Blue October in just a bit. We're gonna allow some more people to, to kind of creep in here, uh, allow a few more people to show up. Um, so uh, in the meantime, a few announcements. First and foremost, uh, we are still in mental health month. So that's gonna be running through the end of May, uh, but this is the last full week. And this is the week that we are focusing on the statement no one else can play your part. Uh, we had a podcast that just went live today with our dear friend Levi the Poet. And uh, yeah, we hope that you enjoy that conversation. I, I know I did. Uh, and you can find that anywhere that you get your, uh, anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, we're going to be a few other places this week. So tomorrow, Jamie was going to be on Facebook Live with The Mighty. Uh, that's going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern. So definitely check them out. Uh, at the Mighty's Facebook page. Um, and I think it's the Mighty's. Jess can correct me. It may be ours. I think it's the Mighty's. So. Um, and then uh, later at 7 p.m. tomorrow, uh, Jamie's going to be doing a takeover of Skull Candy's Instagram account. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern. So you can catch Jamie tomorrow at 4 and at 7 Eastern. Um, and I think that's kind of all the housekeeping because we are done with our run for it 5k so if any of y'all were part of that experience thank you so much for doing your part we shattered some records and that was all because of y'all um yeah housekeeping done uh i am going to bring in my friend justin Furstenfeld. praying that technology will work There he is. Hey. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Good to see you too, buddy. How are you? I'm doing great. You're, you're, looking, you're looking good. Thanks, man. Stop doing drugs. That, that'll, that'll do it, right? Well, I mean, it's, it's been 10 years since we uh, last got to hang out. And I was digging around our warehouse oh, yeah. when, lo and behold, wow, boom. Do you, do you recognize the signature, right? Oh, God, right about, yeah. Right about there? Pick up the phone. Oh, my gosh. Is that not wild? It's been 10 years. I just don't know how y'all put up with me back then. I was crazy back then. Crazy. Well, I, would, I, I, I had to drive myself uh, in, in, that, uh, in that wrapped, uh, what was it, a, a Honda Pilot or Honda Element? One of those. Uh, but, man, like... Oh, so, so, so cool to, to catch up with you. And uh, you guys have some huge announcements. So you guys have been super busy. Um, yeah. What, what just happened a few days ago? Uh, we released our documentary, Get Back Up. Um, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was super cool. Seven years in the making. Um, about eight years ago, I decided to get sober and clean and sober and really tackle my depression and I was sick of getting put in and out of hospitals and having these weird things happen to me and it was really debilitating to my business and, and to everything. So I decided to make a proactive change in my life. And when I got out of rehab, they said, man, you're gonna have to stay sober for that first year. It's very important. It's the hardest. And so I said, well, let's just put a camera crew on me. You know, let's just follow me around and follow the band around. And let's just record for a few years what it's like 
to get your life back together after you've ruined it with drugs, alcohol, and, and not paying attention to your mental illness. And, and, um, and man, seven years later, we finished it. And it's the most beautiful piece of art that I think I've ever been a part of. And it's pretty raw. It's really raw. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's gorgeous. I was just sick of seeing all these documentaries being made about some of the most amazing artists in the world kill themselves or overdose or drink themselves to death or, or, you know, it's just horrible. So I wanted to make one that showed people that recovery was possible, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So for people, for people just tuning in now, um, this is Justin from Blue October. Uh, he and his bandmates just released a documentary called Get Back Up. Uh, and we'll be name dropping that several times through throughout this. Yeah, look at that. That's how that's how guerrilla marketing works. Right? Woo! Well, man, that's that's one thing. Um, you know, to kind of backtrack a little bit, one thing that I was wondering when I was watching it was, uh, you know, what what started this? Where were you starting to to film a new album and it turned into this story? But but you said this started as an intentional accountability measure, right? as an accountability, as an insurance policy on my sobriety. It started Man. out as, let's do this. And I think a lot of people helped me get re get sober in three years and I mean, three months in, in a rehab. And then getting out, I was like, just it doesn't, I don't, this, as ugly as it is, let's just film it. Let's just film it. Man. And my family went on the road with me because I, I wouldn't tour without them, you know, at the first year. I just felt uncomfortable doing it and my family did it and went on the road. And so we got my baby being brought up on a tour bus at the beginning of the, it's just, it was amazing. It was really amazing. Truly amazing. God works in crazy ways, man. Really does. That's so cool, man. I mean, not, not everyone gets that ability to have kind of a yearbook that is that all encompassing and uh, you know, it's going to be such a gift, not only to, to your own journey, but, I'm sure to your bandmates, to to your yeah. kids, once they get old enough to start having some honest conversations about mental health, you know, you you are giving so many people such an amazing gift. Like, man, I, I wish that my parents had told me about their history with depression or right. their journey with drugs or, you know, you name it. I, I didn't know that these were topics that were okay to talk about. So right? Right? So again, just, just hats off to you for, for oh, going there, for, for that vulnerability. Um, I appreciate that. I've done that, a lot of damage. I, I don't know if you remember this, but we had a, a tour scheduled together, and then I had to cancel the tour and then reschedule it because I ended up in some hospital, some mental hospital. So if you remember that, I don't know if you remember that. from uh, the I, Yeah. We had to whole stop the whole campaign because of my dumbass, because of my dumbass. You yeah. Know? And that was straight up, and I can't lie to you, it was mental illness combined with drugs and alcohol. And then it just exploded. And, and I, I, if, if, as much people want to say, how do I help my depression? How do I help my mental illness? How do I get better? The one thing I always tell people is, is first of all, you have to stop polluting your mind so you can at least see things clearly. I say fighting mental illness while still doing dope or still drinking alcohol is like going to your house and you're a hoarder and you want to organize. Hmm. You can't, you can't organize a house full of crap, right? You can't organize a house. that's just foggy. You can't organize this and get help for your mental illness. If you're fogging it up with self-help medication, you know? And yeah. so that's the one thing that, that I've always needed to make an amends to you guys. And I'll make it now is that I'm so sorry that I, that I let you guys down because yes, it was mental illness, but it was a lot of drugs and alcohol. And that's what canceled everyone's tour. Yeah. Everyone's for two months. Then we pushed it back for six months. Then we did it. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, we, A, I will absolutely humbly receive that, that amends making. And at the same time, like there's, there's not a, a second of it that, you know, that I would wish to, to relive on your part or, uh, you know, on the part of management and the people that are bringing it get together. However, I don't think I would change a bit either. Like the relationships that, uh, that we were able to, to make, the relationships that we're still able to maintain, 
You know, I don't know if those would have been possible six months prior. True. True. Um, that we, we don't always get to choose the story that we're a part of, but we do get to choose how we respond. And, True. True. and yeah, well, I just, man. I just appreciate you guys. You guys are so nice and so humbling and, and just so awesome. And it was such a fun tour. It was so fun to see that we were doing something positive for the community. Everywhere we went, every city we went, it was just like, bam, bam, bam. It was so cool. Thousands it was of people. So wild. And actually, one thing that uh, I, I think a couple of your band members may know this, maybe Jeremy and, and Matt, but uh, that tour had a generational effect in, in our life uh, that uh, years later, we had an intern who was at one of those shows later when he grew up and turned, uh, you know, the proper age to apply to be uh, an intern. He, he came over. I think he's watching right now. So, John, uh, John! If, if you're watching, uh, thanks so much for being a blue fan. Thanks for believing in to write love. And I don't know if you remember this, Justin, but on the last night of the tour, you gave me this weird totem it was a water bottle with a drumstick gaff tape to it that had a ticket from the last night and <laughs> and a coffee bag as as a head it looked like a voodoo doll it was really weird uh, john is now the possessor of the pick yeah! up the phone totem so awesome. <laughs> maybe he'll post it a little bit later but yeah man well dude, i want to i want to kind of <laughs> it's it's amazing um and I'm so glad it gets to stay like in the family, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, John, take good care of it. That sucker's very bad. <laughs> so, uh, but don't drink the water. Uh, it's probably- If there's water in it, you better like uh, throw that whole thing away. Oh, God. <laughs> After all this time? <laughs> all this time, man. 10 year old bottle So I want to talk- If anyone wants it, yeah. Um, so I want to kind of touch back on the themes of the video and kind of the, the lessons that we're still learning through this. Um, well, first and foremost, how can people watch the movie? Where can people find Get Back Up? Uh, go to getbackup.tv. It's a platform that I set up uh, during this time of pandemic in freaking Weirdville uh, that people, we couldn't get DVDs to, out to people. We couldn't go have screenings for it. So... Um, we set up a streaming site for people to go um, watch the film. So you go to getbackup.tv and you can rent it or you can watch it there. And uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's super uh, enlightening. I wish I would have seen something like this when I was trying to get sober so many years before, because I didn't think that it could be done. And this is just showing people that it can be done. Yeah, man. Well, I, I think you touched on a couple of things there. A, this is a weird time uh, to right. be sober. It's a weird time to be alive. Uh, but community is such an important, you know, structure in the life of, of seeking recovery, right? Right. What, what have you been doing to kind of bolster uh, that sense of community and, and to really kind of uh, support your recovery efforts while um, we're being told to, to kind of keep separate? Every Tuesday night, like tonight, in about two hours, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., I do step work with fans all around the world. And we have two to 3,000 people show up every two, Tuesday night. And we are on step seven tonight. We started to think, I thought this whole thing would be over by like step three, right? The whole <laughs> pandemic. Yeah. We're on step seven now. The seven weeks in a row of doing step work with people. And I'm wondering, wow. Are we going to seriously get through all the steps like and before all this opens back up? But what I'm finding is that the steps work, the 12 steps of AA, they work for depression, they work for anxiety, they work for drug addiction, they work for for alcoholism as a form of uh, self-healing, as a form of uh, finding your spirit, as a form of believing in something bigger than yourself, as a form of um, realizing where all your problems came from. They help you self-reflect. Um, and so we're slowly but surely walking through all the steps and every single week, we have more and more and more people that show up. And I'm just blown away. It's helping me with my recovery. It's helping other people. And it's us doing it with each other. It's not me going, hey, come let me teach you the ways of sober. I'm super sober. <sighs> no, no. It's like, hey, I was crazy. Let me show you the proof. I was insane. And these 12 simple steps saved my ass 
if you want some of what I got, which is peachy keen and positive all the time, like for real, then stay on the channel and, and do these steps with us and challenge yourself. But if you don't, change the channel. Like, but this, if there's somebody out there looking for something bigger than just what they have, if, if they don't like what they have inside, if they, if, if they haven't been happy with the person they see in the mirror, stay on with me and let's, let's talk through it. You know, yeah, it's, re it's really cool how many people are showing up and it's just, it's amazing. Dude, that's, that's so rad. And, you know, I think in this age of, of COVID, like being creative is going to be the way forward. You know, like you mentioned, regardless of what it is you're facing day in and day out. Uh, so for, for those of you that uh, maybe you have a scheduling conflict and you can't hang out with Justin in a couple hours, uh, if you're curious about taking steps in your recovery, we do have some resources for you. So if you go to TWLOHA.com, we have a yellow button that says self-care. Uh, so scroll down, you'll see uh, recovery resources right there. So you can find online meeting groups, uh, Zoom groups for AA, for NA, for Al-Anon, for Dude, uh, just that's incredible. eating disorder. Yeah, man. So Wait, that's- so, so, so tell me again what it is, because tonight on my show, I'm going to tell everybody. So TWLOHA. Dot com. Let me write. Let me write. This is amazing. I can't believe. This. And you have. This is great. T W L O H A dot com. Okay. Yep, then so I go down to the safe. What is it? In the in the upper right hand corner, you're going to see a yellow button that says self care. That's great. And that's actually a page that we made just for stay at home, just for quarantine. So there's a ton of stuff there. Uh, Look at you being proactive. That's amazing. Well, I wish we could say we, we thought of it before we had to stay home, but, but none of us did, bro. That's none right. Did. That's right. So, yeah. uh, so if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see support groups. Tap that button and you're going to see a bunch of stuff. Woo! Way to go, man. And it looks like we have some friends that just uh, uh, commented on the stream with that as well. Oh, for those of you watching, if you have a question for uh, to write Love on Our Arms or Blue October, myself or Justin, feel free to hit that question box uh, down at the bottom of the screen and we'll try to knock through a couple of those a little bit later. Um, That's really great. But, but yeah, man, so I mean, I think this is a weird time where perhaps, especially if someone is dealing with substance abuse or, or alcoholism or drug addiction, like it can be terrifying to be going through this alone to, you know, those were some of the first questions that I was fielding during this, uh, this outbreak was, how am I going to maintain my sobriety without my community? Um, so I think, Justin, you probably have some awesome perspectives that, you know, as a touring musician, you don't always get to pick your environment. Uh, yeah. what, are, what are some things that you've learned uh, over the years of, of doing your job sober in, in an industry where sobriety is not the norm? Uh, what are some ways that you've been able to keep your head, keep your wits about you? Man, it's honestly the steps. I'll come back to those again, because if you're stuck in your house, one thing that us addicts love is to be isolated and left alone. Because, man, we can get into some serious trouble and nobody will judge us. Mm. So this whole pandemic has really messed a lot of stuff up. It's given everybody their perfect sense of safety, and that's loneliness and despair. Um, for people that are really proactive with this, uh, wanting to stay sober, it's eating right. Um, it's getting out of bed and being active uh, during this pandemic. Get a routine and do it every day I, I go running every day i hate running i hate it can't stand it but i run for a mile and a half and then i'm just like beat Ugh, it sucks and then i walk for two miles but i have to do it every day during this pandemic or i'll just go screwy you know i'll go so screwy i have to eat clean i have to get good sleep i have to watch what i'm watching when i go to sleep I'm not going to watch a bunch of murder mysteries right before I go to bed if I want to wake up in a good mood the next day. I have to be very proactive about what I read, who I let in my life, what I allow in my life. The news right now, don't watch that. I mean, it's just crazy. It's negative. It's just nothing but negativity. The main key to me staying sober is to always keep close to the positive light. Always keep close to the positive light. And that means people too. That means don't talk to people that just want to bring you down. Don't, you don't have to. If you're struggling with mental illness or addiction, you don't have to be a savior for anybody right now. 
You can mm -hmm. be yourself and you can tell people, I don't have time right now, especially the spiritually sick ones. You can pray for them and move on. It's all about protecting your, don't let anybody break that glass around you. You know, you gotta yeah. pretend you live in a glass house right now and just get through the times, get through the times. Yeah, man, dude, that's really beautiful, really profound advice there. Negative Let's, people, uh, negative people will suck the life out of you, bro. They will come in there and they will just throw a grenade of negativity in your face. Just because misery loves company. <laughs> Jeez. I, th I think we all heard that one as loud and clear as possible. Yeah. Sorry, but, no, man, you're good. You're good. It's uh, passionate uh, topics. Those are passionate responses. Let's uh, let's get back to, to music. I mean, I, I don't think I'm alone when I say that music is a place that we run to to kind of make sense of our lives. Uh, I reckon that many of the people watching uh, have found, you know, Blue October's music to be friends, you know, in, in some duffed or tough times. Yeah. What what is kind of your uh, your recovery playlist? What is your what music has been a friend to you as you've been walking through this journey? Dude, I will be so honest with you, uh, and it's going to sound crazy because I never got into to this till I got sober, is old jazz, like Ella Fitzgerald, uh, the Misty song, uh, Billie Holiday, Dave Brubeck, Chet Baker, like that old romantic stuff that you just yeah. listen to, just holding your hand, that kind of stuff. It's like so relaxing. And so cool. I've also listened to a lot of cigarettes, a lot of cigarettes after sex. Um, I've broken into the old bands that I used to listen to before I started using drugs. Because that's one thing I noticed. Once you start using, you forget all the good taste in music. So I started <laughs> listening to old stuff like Idaho and the Red House Painters and Cocteau Twins and just good shit. Really? Yeah, man. No, you just dropped some bangers there. So we are going to be, uh, we are going to be saving this on uh instagram tv so if you missed any of those bands uh check back and and get those on your spotify playlist better yet just buy the records do that buy some merch while you're at it be a responsible music fan i'll get off that soapbox real quick um I like that let's let's talk about your music a little bit so blue october has been playing music for for a minute now uh in the past seven years you've been doing it uh through the lens of sobriety have there been songs that were written in, you know, darker, cloudier times that have kind of taken on a, a new meaning for you? Like, uh, are there anything from your catalog that has almost like a new life now be because of your new life? Yeah. Uh, um, Hate Me, Into the Ocean. Um, all the songs that were written about serious depression and things like that, um, they now have a light on them, almost like, I tell people, I ask people, do do, they, do you remember when Johnny Cash did the Nine Inch Nails Hurt song? Remember that? Yeah. Remember how yeah. pure it was? Yeah. The reason it was so pure and the reason it was so good is because he was a stepper also. He was a pure, sober, clean, godly person when he did that song about demonic devil stuff. So it's like, I take those songs that were written by this little devil and I put my faith and my my piece on top of it and I sing it with a smile like it's just like it's gonna be okay so yeah I love the feeling that I have now when I sing those songs because it's no longer ah, look at me and how bad I have it it's more like man life's good yeah, life's real man. good here's here's a wild story from that Johnny Cash uh Nine Inch Nails and you probably have already heard of it but uh but Trent Reznor did not play that song for years he only started playing it live again about like three years ago and whenever he was asked about it he says no that's that's johnny's song now yeah dude, and, like, come on and yeah just so beautiful how like you know music you know you can you can have some really crappy stuff go down go down in your life and yet the story isn't done yet that as long as there's an audience to receive it then that conversation is going to continue so the hope is just to uh what do they say in the rooms keep coming back keep coming you know back. keep coming it back if it, you work it it works if you work it and yeah man so so this uh um this is a tail end of mental health month 
Yeah. Uh, and for, for those of you watching that have been tracking with us uh, at, to write Love on Our Arms, we've been really digging deep into three statements that, that we think are black and white, that we think are non-negotiable. Uh, so those statements are, we need your presence, not your perfection. Uh, the second statement is hope remains. And the third statement is no one else can play your part. And uh, Justin, I'm wondering if, if any of those kind of hit you, if you want to um, unpack, uh, you know, your, your hearing of those phrases. If I'm going to speak these to you, Justin, the world needs your presence, not your perfection. Justin, hope remains. Justin, no one else can play your part. Yeah. What, is, what does that call to mind to you? What does that awaken? In, Man, in that no one else can play your part is you're just as important as anybody else out there. And you have one life to live one one of them and the longer you spend ruining and poisoning your body the less you get to experience the true beauty in life like it says in the big book we are meant to be here on this earth to be happy joyous and free happy joyous and free and us humans are the ones that get in the way of that with all of our drama and our our need to make up drama and obsession with drama um that no one else can play your part is brilliant. I love that. I love yeah, that. Man. Hope remains. That means come on. I, I wish. I wish. I wish people realize that that hope exists. I don't think enough people realize that hope exists and it's a real thing, because they don't give each other. They don't give themselves the chance to um, experience it. You know. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, dude, thank you so much for, for sharing. I know that that probably put you on the on the spot a little bit. But that's good. I like being put on the spot. My favorite one that I always learned was there is a solution. Like mm. to whatever freaking problem you have, there's always a solution. It's just how bad do you really want to find out? Yeah. yeah. I have, a, I have a, another sober friend who says, uh, you know, that a change is guaranteed as long as you are doing something, then yeah. things can't remain the same. Uh, yeah. so, so it's about kind of finding what that, that it could be a, a subtle change. It could be opening up to, to a friend uh, and thereby realizing that you won't explode just by opening right. up to a friend. That it's, right. it's, it's okay for, for this to be scary, but it's way more okay not to do this alone. And True. you know, no one's expected you to do this alone. Yeah, and just think if you just aren't happy with what you're doing right now, do the opposite. Instead of sitting down and watching TV for four hours, go outside and, I don't know, try to run for a half a mile. Just try it. And you have no idea the the amazing thing it does for me. And I hate it, <laughs> you know? So just try to get out and be active. But that whole yeah. negative person thing is so true, though. If you allow negativity in your life, you're going to be a slave to it. Yeah, man. It's, um, yeah, it's, been great hearing your perspectives here. I'd love to see if we have some, uh, some questions from the gallery. Um, uh, someone, this is a great question. It just says, damn. Um, so I think that was more so just, uh, uh, we're going to receive that as gratitude uh, <laughs> from, from people damn. checking in with, with this. Damn. Um, let's see here. All right, so let's uh, hit this one real quick. Uh, Static is noise is asking Justin, how long have you been on this journey? Eight years. Eight years of sobriety, and it's amazing. Wow. And he asked me if I ever feel like using again. I feel like using again all the time. I'm just not going to be a little bitch and do it. You know, <laughs> that's how I have to see it. I feel like you know what so many people don't understand. Um, you know, if, if you are kind of uh, consuming music on, on the outside, if it's been a while since you've been to a live show, that uh, the, the idea of sex, drugs, and rock and roll um, is really only for the people who allow that to be the narrative, that yeah. there are so many people in the industry, so many performers that, that have embraced uh, a healthy change, have embraced positivity, uh, you know, the, the amount of festivals that I go to uh, and talking with artists and they're like, look, I had a choice. I could either lose my job, lose my life or lose this habit. 
uh, and now I'm making some of the best music uh, sure. in my life. If, um, if you go to live music events, uh, there's probably going to be other sober friends, other clean friends in the building. If you go to festivals, many festivals have 12 step groups or recovery yeah. meeting groups that music is still for you, even if you don't fit the social norm that you think, you know, rock and roll and you think dance music and you think all these uh, genres um, play into that, right. uh, you know, that this is a, a brave new world of uh, paying for music that you can remember. Yeah, <laughs> so. it's true. And experiencing it and truly feeling it, you know, it's a great thing. It really is. Yeah, man. So uh, again, if you're popping into this a little bit late, uh, my name's Chad. I'm here with To Write Love on Our Arms. Uh, this is Justin. He's with the band Blue October. They are releasing new music. They just released a new documentary about Justin's journey uh, from addiction to sobriety. And it's called Get Back Up. Uh, Justin, what is the website for Get Back Up? Getbackup.tv getbackup.tv check oh, it out yeah so uh you know we want to be honest uh we want to be or uh, kind of acknowledge the honesty uh there may be people here watching this now or watching this uh days or weeks later that are ready for a change if you in this moment are ready to take a first step to to finding help you got options. So if you go to our website, which is twloha.com, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a blue button right next to the yellow button that says find help, where you can find free and reduced cost mental health care options specific to your own zip code if what? you're in the United States. Yeah. Amazing. So that's, that's there for you. Um, check that out. Uh, it's it's uh, all resources that we would trust with our friends and family. Um, if it's too tiring to make that search, if it's too tiring to vocalize that you need help, anytime, day or night, you can text to the number 741741, and that'll get you connected to our friends in Crisis Text Line. They're there to respond to you 24-7. Um, that's in the United States. Uh, there are Canada and UK numbers as well. You can find those on our Find Help page. Wow. Wow. Um, so whatever it is you're going through, you are not alone. You've never been alone. You may not have always known that, but now you do. Uh, so, so thank you so much for showing up today. Um, Justin, I, I want to kick it back to you. What would you say to someone who's watching this conversation, who is wondering if a change is possible in their own life? That there is a solution. There is one. There is always going to be one. And that it just takes an ounce, an ounce of faith. And look at the two of us. We're sitting here telling you that our lives are changed. Um, you deserve to give yourself a chance. You deserve it. Give it six months of your whole entire life and see if you start to like the person that's in there. Give it six freaking months of true, true self look. You know, a good look at yourself for six months. Clean out the closet. Clean out that br the fog in your brain. Stop taking the drugs that you're taking that say help. I can't not go without my weed because my weed helps me. Well, wonder why you're sitting around your house all day. You know, it's, it's serious. You have to take a hard look at yourself. And if you struggle with mental illness, the right thing is not to cover it up with other things. It is to get out there, be active, get up and do something different with your life before they take it away from you one day, because they will. So do you want to spend this whole life complaining about how hard it is? Or do you want to wake up early in the morning and go out and smell the flowers, touch the ocean, love and care for the people that love you and are truly a badass because you worked at it and you gave a true pro proactive approach at finding a solution to it. And the only way you'll get a true proactive approach, that's hard to say, a true proactive <laughs> approach is by seriously working hard at it and being rigorous, rigorously honest. And that's painful for people to be so yeah. honest, so honest, you know, but you well, gotta do it. it looks like you already started your uh, step seven chat uh, a little, little bit earlier. <laughs> I did. But, uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, so um, if, you, if you're just coming in now, Justin is hosting uh, some recovery discussions. Uh, is that going to be on the, the Blue October page or your page? Every Tuesday or? night on Blue October's YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. I take over for an hour and we do step work, recovery step work, uh, depression, alcoholism, uh, drug addiction, uh, anything that you've got inside that you want to change during this pandemic, it can help at some point of your life. So I'm just trying to share what has been so freely given to me, my friend Chad, and show people that there is a light and that life is so damn beautiful if we just get outside and work at it. That's awesome, man. Again, thank you so much. Uh, please check out the documentary, Get Back Up. Please check out their new music, uh, which they are, you're, you're recording a music video, right? Oh yeah, tomorrow. Where, guess what I'm doing? Guess what I'm doing what? in it? Jogging. That's amazing. So when you see that, because it's social distancing, right? It's just me, and there's going to be a drone, and the director's way off somewhere else. And it's going to be me jogging while I'm singing. And you're going to notice in there, Chad, when you're watching it, you're going to be thinking, that guy hates what he's doing right now. <laughs> Ooh, he hates it. <laughs> oh, he just, but just like a I'm mile and a half at a time. I'm going to be looking like I'm having fun. But no, I'm going to do it like 100 yards at a time. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so again, thank you. Thank you, Justin. Um, thank you, Blue October. Thank you, everyone that is watching. Uh, resources do exist. Hope remains. You are not alone. If you need ideas on where to find uh, some safe places to begin that journey, uh, visit us, T-W-L-O-H-A.com. Uh, Justin, last word is to you, man. God bless all you guys, and there is a solution, and no one else can play your part. That awesome. It? That's it. That's it. Woo! Thank you guys yeah, you so much. For... Fun, baby. Dude, I, I just might. I just uh, freaking might. Dude, we got to hang and go get a coffee if I'm ever in your town. All right. Uh, yeah, man. Well, it's, it's Florida. I know you come through here. I do, buddy. Save me at save me a coffee over there. All right. You got it, man. Anytime. Right, God bless you, buddy. Take care. Take care, my friend.